Uh, yeah, before I uh, take questions, just going to follow up on uh, DJ Turner's status. You know, obviously, uh, we're disappointed in DJ's decision making um, a couple of weeks ago uh, off the field. Um, he won't be playing this week against Rutgers. Um, you know, we'll continue to be able to meet and practice with us. Um, and, and I'll say this, you know, DJ's part of our football family and families support each other. Um, and we'll continue to work through this uh, while also understanding that there are going to be repercussions for making poor decisions and choices in your life. You know, I had a chance to recruit DJ and I know the family that he comes from. And he comes from a really good family. And, uh, you know, as a family, whether it's good times or bad times, we're here to support each other. Um, you know, our football family is no different. And so we'll continue to give DJ the support off the field with football taking a backseat to everything else and we're continuing to cooperate with the Office of Student Conduct and uh, you know we'll put this behind us um, and, and, and won't have any further comments until all this stuff is kind of concluded. You know from an injury update you know the only one I can really talk about is uh, Lorenzo Harrison. Uh, Lolo is going to have surgery. He uh, tore MCL and partially tore his ACL in the game on uh, Friday so uh, you know, we'll get low, low, low healthy and everyone else that we talked about, you know, after the game right now are game time decisions for us. Decisions for. So, um, you know, lastly, you know, one of the things I know, obviously, you know, we're disappointed in the way we performed. You know, our fan base really showed up and, and created a great atmosphere and we didn't do our job. But like I told our team, uh, you know, plays within a game have a shelf life, which means when the play is over, you got to get to the next play. Well, so do games, and whether they're games where we have great success or games like the most recent one against Penn State where, where we weren't very good, we need, we need to move on. and We need to move to the next play or move to the next game. And so I know with that being said, we're excited about the opportunity um, to go up to, to Rutgers this weekend. Um, you know, it's my job as the leader of this thing here to make sure that we get our confidence back on the offensive side of the ball and we do the things that we're capable of executing uh, to get us back on the right track, which I know we will. Um, so with that, I'll open it up to any questions. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. The Jack Lynch Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Mike, the lack of execution the last two games, does that start in practice and go back to what you were saying after the Syracuse game about needing to learn to uh, deal with success and then also handle, handle adversity? Yeah, I think those are all part of the growing pains um, of managing success, but also uh, being able to come back from adversity. And, uh, you know, again, that's my job as the coach and the leader to make sure that our guys understand that and, and are able to do the, both those things. Um, you know, the lack of execution, you know, it's amazing when you watch the tape, you know, the first interception was an opportunity to create momentum. We had a wide open receiver and we just didn't throw the right kind of football to get the ball to the open receiver. And again, those are things that are all teachable. Those are all correctable. And that's kind of, you know, when we went back and watched the film and again, we didn't spend a lot of time, obviously, because of the way the game finished uh, dealing with other than the teachable moments, the things within the game where, you know, there were teachable moments and, and, and that's one of them. You know, we had 17 missed tackles, which, uh, you know, the most missed tackles we've had in the game this year was seven. So, again, these are all correctable things that, you know, we'll spend our time this week making sure, one, that it's got to get back to playing disciplined football in terms of how we execute, in terms of the fundamentals uh, involved with executing it and why it's important to do it that way. Coach, is Josh 100% uh, healthy? Yeah, at this point, he is. 
there was a report out that he had a shoulder issue with his non-throwing shoulder. I haven't seen a report that I mean, he hasn't missed a day of practice in the last four weeks, five weeks of the season, so he's healthy. Mike, a uh, question you probably didn't anticipate at any point this season, but is there any concern about the running back depth with having, having lost a couple of guys, and does it kind of limit you as to some of the things you want to do, or do you, do you feel like you're fine given the guys that you still do have? Well, we still have some talent there. You know, obviously it's a, it's a luxury to have the depth that we've had, but losing Jake Funk, which, I, again, the leadership of him, and then finally getting low, low healthy. And, he was going to be a big part of our game plan in the Penn State game with some of the different things that he was capable of doing. Uh, it hurts, but we still have three really talented guys and, and, and you know, Javon Leak and, and, and Tayon Fleet Davis, and all three of those guys are really capable playmakers for us, and it's still one of the strengths for our team. Um, but with that being said, well, again, we've got to, you know, continue to manage that position, make sure that our guys, you know, Ant wasn't 100% in the game Saturday, he had a high ankle. Missed a lot of the bye week, getting uh, re healthy with that, but was able to go play some for us. And so, again, you know, we lose two really good players in Jake and Lolo, but I still feel it's a luxury to have the three that we still had. To your right, Dave. Coach, uh, what, what do you, where do you feel things have gone awry for Josh in the last two games, and what do you feel he needs to do to get that groove back that he had early on? Well, it starts with confidence, and you know, you miss a couple throws here and there as a quarterback. And again, that's why I said on uh, Friday night that you know it's my job to make sure that we get things called that he can execute, that he to build his confidence. You know, uh, obviously we're a little thin up front with losing some of the guys we lost. We lost Johnny in the middle of the game. We lost Marcus Minor last game some, uh, and then losing uh, losing Squill there earlier uh, in the Temple game. You know, we've got to give him confidence to be able to get the ball out quick, um, get back to being really disciplined, which I thought, you know, he played a little better in this game than he played in the Temple game, but still missed some opportunities. And so, you know, we've got to, again, continue on the offensive side of the ball to figure out uh, ways to get our best players the ball, which are our running backs, and we've got a few receivers and tight ends, which our quarterback has to distribute it. And this offense will go through our quarterback and his ability to make the decisions we need him to make on each and every play. And I thought Josh did a better job in the Penn State game than he did in Temple in some of the decision making. But again, the turnovers, you know, we had two turnovers in the first three drives. We gave up 21 points off of turnovers. Uh, the one down in the red area was a, a, a back breaking with a team like ours. You know, we drive it back down there and have a chance to get 14 to seven and, and we don't come away with points. Kind of took the life out of us. And again, that's my job to make sure that when we have adversity like that, that it can't create the environment or the culture on the sideline where it's here we go again mentality as opposed to let's go do it again. Mike, in ter terms of the issues you have with the offensive line protection, uh, is there a thought of, of getting Piggy on the field for some more packages given his ability to, you know, not, not need as much uh, protection because of his ability to run? Well, I think you're going to always need protection because even if you have a runner and they can contain you, uh, that takes that away. I just think for us, staying in manageable third downs, you know, we have we don't have a lot of protection issues on first and second down. And so, again, I always go back to if you want to be good on third down, we've got to be really productive on first and second down and make sure we maintain favorable third down situations, which we did earlier in the year. I mean, again, this week we got about – 10, third, and seven plus situations. And, you know, we're not built up front to protect as long as you need to to get that yardage. And some of that comes into play calling where, you know, maybe we need to, instead of trying to get the full 10 yards for the first down, let's catch and run, understanding the limitations we have, maybe with some of the protection issues to hold on to the ball. And so, you know, again, we'll get some things put in the third down that will allow the quarterback to drop back and get the ball out of his hand a little quicker. But if we want to, you know, he hasn't had trouble in protections on first and second down. It's been third down. It's been our Achilles heel the last two games, and we've been in some terrible third down yardage situations, which aren't favorable for anybody normally. Just, just follow up on, 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 uh, on Josh. In terms of the uh, the, with, with the confidence issue, if, if he starts as this kind of start he had the last two games, does he have – Know, sort of a shorter leash in terms of when you will make it, you know, put the, the, the 
Yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely continuing the rep. You know, Piggy's gotten a, a good a good amount of the reps, uh, you know, the last four weeks as the backup quarterback. Uh, for me, it's all about the feel I have for Josh. You know, I, I felt in a Temple game that, you know, he was kind of had that long look that you see where it wasn't a lot of confidence. I didn't see it as much in the Penn State game later in the game. I thought early on after the, 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 the two turnovers that he, you know, so uh, we'll continue. Josh is our starter, but yeah, uh, just like any other position, you know, you remain a starter based on your ability pr to produce. And for us at the quarterback position, it starts with taking care of the football first, scoring points seconds, and then displaying leadership third. And, you know, we've got to get that out of that position. If we don't feel we're getting it out of Josh, we won't hesitate to give Piggy a chance. Um, you know, just to confirm, will you know, Lorenzo Harrison be out for the season and also what are the updates on the other guys that uh, went out of a game of injuries against Penn State? Yeah, as I said when I started, um, Lolo with the surgery, uh, with the MCL will most likely be out for the year. And with the other guys, there'll be game time decisions in terms of their availability. I don't, I don't have enough information to, to give much of an update other than these guys are getting treatment and we're trying to get them ready to all be able to play and be available for us on Saturday. With Lorenzo out, do his touches, I know he was supposed to be a big part of the Penn State game, or do his touches get redistributed to the three healthy running backs we have, or do you figure yeah. somebody else gets to step, step up? Yeah, I mean, that's what it's about. You know, we try to find the skill set that guys have. Lolo's a guy that was a, a, a challenge for people in space because of his ability. You know, he got hurt on the reverse that we called early in the game to kind of get him a touch and get him out on the perimeter. But the other three, you know, Ant in space is as dangerous. Uh, Javon Leak is a dangerous home run hitter in space as well. And then Fleet Davis is one of those guys that's kind of a jack of all trades for us. So you'll see those three be able to split the work. Uh, hopefully, again, like I said, we've got to you know, keep those guys all healthy and then do a good job of our tight ends, making sure they're involved. Uh, Dante Demas is a guy that I feel like we've got to get more involved in the offense like we had earlier in the year. And again, that's what the quarterback's job is to be able to distribute the ball and make sure that we're getting touches to the guys that we need to get the touches to. Time for two or three more. As I'm Scott. sure you probably already know, Chris Ashford's let go of an interim coach this week. Um, having gone through that situation yourself here, does it present any you know additional challenges? And having maybe gone through it, does it maybe help with any of those challenges if there are any? Um, you know, obviously it's disappointing whenever you see a coach get let go in the middle of the year. And, um, I've experienced both sides of it, having been let go as a head coach, but also as an interim. And, and yeah, it's a challenge, and it's our players are, are well aware that having gone through it themselves, and you saw the rally that they put together when they played Texas last year with the interim situation, that um, there's nothing worse than playing a team that doesn't have much to lose. And I, I would imagine knowing Coach Ash and the type of team that he developed, that these guys will rally together uh, to form a bond and, and, and play for each other. And so we expect them to, to have all types of effort to, you know, you can expect anything. You know, when I was the interim coach, one of the things I know that I used to say is that, hey, you know, you can do anything you want. You know, we can fake punts. We can, so our guys have to be prepared for any and everything because, uh, again, these guys have nothing to lose. I mean, and I know that the type of team that they are when you watch the way they've played, They'll bond together and, and they'll give us a good fight. To your right, Mike. Uh, Mike, uh, it seemed like uh, Antoine Brooks had a pretty good game the other night. What, what, can you talk about what he brings to the defense as a safety now? Yeah, you know, Antoine's one of those high energy guys. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll make some mistakes here and there and take bad angles, but he makes up for it with his effort. Um, he's the leader over there on that side of the ball. He's one of those guys that you know he's going to give you 110% of everything he has. He's a guy that at the end of the game is always banged up because he plays on all the special teams. He plays on, in, on, on defense for us. And again, you know, he's been one of the best leaders for us this season. And, uh, you know, playing as a safety, we're getting him around the football. We put him in some situations. I mean, he's very versatile. He can play man coverage. He can blitz the quarterback. He can drop down in the box. And so he makes us a little more uh, flexible on the defensive side of the ball because of his skill set. Patrick. Mike, uh, when you when you look at the penalty situation, that was obviously a, a shortcoming last year as well as this year. I know you're not worried about last year, but does it take time to make a team more disciplined, or can you reverse that fairly quickly? 
uh, in, in light of what's happened here over the last couple of weeks? No, we need to we need to get it straight quickly. I mean, our guys, we talk about it all the time. You know, discipline will precede winning, and part of discipline is not beating yourself. And you know, you know, some of the stats from that game. I mean, 22 percent of our offensive plays had some type of self-inflicted uh, self-inflicted error, interceptions, sacks, drop passes, penalties, fumbles. I mean, 22 percent of the plays you call can't have self-inflicted wounds. You know, 17 missed tackles. You know, 21 points off of turnovers. Like those are all things. We're, we're already playing a number 12 team in the country, and those are the things that I don't think they need help with being able to, to beat us the way they did. So, again, it's always going to start with us. Very rarely would it, it, it you know, deal with our opponent. And so I've got to get that part fixed. And we get it fixed by either changing players, which uh, with some of the injuries, it's a little tough to make those type of changes. But we'll keep reinforcing it. We'll keep coaching it. We'll keep coaching them through it. You know, the one-two is there by our guys. And, again, I, you know, it's great to, to know that, you know, Football is kind of a metaphor of life and that we're going to get another opportunity this Saturday. You know, you face adversity, you get up off the mat, you go fight. And I expect our guys to do it. I'm looking forward to seeing it this Saturday. Yeah, Mike, just to follow up on Scott's question, in terms of preparing for Rutgers, when you have a new you know, head coach, new offensive coordinator in there, do you, is it harder to prepare because you're not knowing what their tendencies are, what this guy wants to do? And how much did you, when you coached that game against Penn State back in 2015, how much was that to your benefit? Did you change a lot of things from what Randy did? No, those are good questions. You know, first, you know, for us, we got to, again, it starts with what Maryland does. It starts with what we do on offense, defense, and special teams. And we need to be really clean in terms of our execution, in terms of our assignments, and making sure that we know and can execute our stuff first. Um, I, I equate this game a lot to playing an opening game where you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. You anticipate some things. I mean, obviously, there's very few things you can't just wholesale change and go from a pro-style system to running wishbone. Uh, at least I don't think you can within a three-day period. But um, So the expectation is that they'll be similar to what they are, but obviously the personalities of the play callers. I know on the offensive side, I think they got a new play caller on offense because they let the offensive coordinator go. And what we're going to have to do defensively is be really clean in our alignments and our assignments. And then once we get into the game, the adjustment piece becomes huge for us. Um, as far as changing things, I think definitely, you know, you don't change the structure of how you do things um, in terms of the day-to-day -day practice times, lift times, meeting times. But I definitely flip some of the practice schedule things because you know, my big goal when I took over as the interim was to make sure that those seniors had the best experience they could possibly have their senior year because those are the kids that get kind of screwed when you fire coaches in the middle of the year. These guys that have spent four years there and now they're in their senior year and in the middle of it you've got to make adjustments there. So uh, I changed some of the things that we did during practice, uh, but for the most part the fundamental uh, structure of your team and organization is tough to change in a three-day period. So. Uh, we'll just have to be really good with our adjustments and, and see what they present to us and then uh, get our players uh, playing well and the things that we need to do on offense, defense, and special teams. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.